Hey all, my name is Ashton, and today I would like to invite you to join me in Jude chapter 1, verse 5. Uh, just in way of quick review, um, our first week, this is our third week in the Jude series. Our first week we looked at the openings and greetings of Jude's epistle. Um, we kind of noticed the three things he prayed for, that the uh, mercy, peace, and love of God would be multiplied to his audience. Uh, we see why that prayer was important, and we saw that last week um, in his purpose for writing, which his purpose for writing was to contend earnestly for the faith because false teachers had crept in unnoticed. And today, Jude gives us this very, very important reminder of the previous judgment. So if you would, again, um, have your if you have your Bibles open, uh, we're going to be starting in verse 5. We'll read all the way through verse 8. Verse 5 says, Now I desire to remind you, though you know all things once for all, that the Lord, after saving a people out of the land of Egypt, subsequently destroyed those who did not believe, and angels who did not keep their own domain, but ab abandoned their proper abode, he has kept in eternal bonds under darkness for the judgment of the great day. Just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them, since they, in the same way as these, indulged in gross immorality and went after strange f flesh, are exhibited as an example in undergoing the punishment of eternal life. Yet, in the same way, these men, the false teachers that Jude is writing about, these men also by dreaming defile the flesh and reject authority and revile angelic majesties. What is Jude saying in this? He's giving a reminder of, of these previous judgments. Um, so Jude in these verses, he's pointing out the sin of these false teachers. And, and not only that, he's not only saying what they're doing is sin. He's saying, look back. Because it's no different than the previous sins of those who have already faced judgment. We have, uh, in verse 5, he references Egypt. Well, if you read uh, Exodus 12, 51, and then um, Exodus 14, 21 through 31, you see that God delivered, after delivering his people from the hand of the Egyptians, judged the Egyptians because they oppressed his people, because of how they treated the people of God, because they did not believe that Yahweh alone is Lord. God judged them for that. In the same way, false teachers do not, and there's no way they can believe that Yahweh is Lord. They can know it. They can have a head knowledge. James says, the book of James says, even the demons believe and shudder. False teachers can know the truth, but they don't believe the truth. They're like Egypt. They don't believe the truth. Angels, uh, in verse 6, we see in 2 Peter 2, 4, that God doesn't spare angels just because they're angels. Those who do not keep their own domain but abandoned their proper abode. God has kept them in eternal bonds under darkness for judgment of the great day. God has set these angels aside for judgment. What have false teachers done? As in the role of leadership, in the role of teacher, they have not done what is expected of them, which is to lead God's people into righteousness, lead God's people into godly living. Instead, false teachers have deceived and are and continue to, to, to deceive God's people and mislead them as a false shepherd. They have not stayed where they're supposed to. Instead, they have abandoned their proper abode. And lastly, we saw in verse 7, Sodom and Gomorrah. And if you read Genesis 19, 1 through 29, you kind of get in some uh, insights into that. But, Sodom and Gomorrah were these two wicked cities known for their sins. And what does God do? He delivered Lot. And as he was taking Lot out of the city, fire from heaven was coming down on these people.
these false teachers in the same way are indulging in a gross immorality. Their morals do not align with scripture. They went after strange flesh exhibited as an example in the in undergoing the punishment of eternal fire. That's what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah. And what does Jude say? Jude says, look back at these three examples. Look back at Egypt, angels, Sodom and Gomorrah. Look at these examples of those who have already been judged. And he says, yet in the same way, these men also by dreaming defile the flesh and reject authority and even revile angelic majesties. The false teachers creeping into the church are guilty of the same sins as those in the past. It, these these sins of the the, fal, the sins of the false teachers. It's nothing new. It's not that they've invented this new sin. They're just doing what sinful people have done for generations. But Jude is saying, as you're contending, look back at these examples. God dealt with those people. Will God not deal with this unrighteousness in the same way? The way that God dealt with unrighteousness and ungodly living back in the Old Testament is how he will judge sin in the day of judgment. It might not come about in our day, but as you are contending for the faith, remember you are fighting. You are in a war. You are in a battle and you have victory. We're not fighting to win. We're fighting because we know we have won. As Christians, Christians have a hope. They have an assurance that as they stand firm in the faith, as they contend for the faith, as they fight for the faith, we can know that we win. No matter what, we win. In the same way that God dealt with Egypt, that God has dealt with those fallen angels, that God dealt with Sodom and Gomorrah, he will deal with the false teachers. Continue faithfully contend for the faith. Would you guys bow your heads with me? Dear Jesus, we thank you for this day, God, this opportunity to open your word, read it, and study it. God, we thank you that we have examples, that that we don't have to wonder if you will deal with the false teachers among us even today, God. We know that in the same way you dealt with sins in the past, you will hold false teachers accountable. God, as we're starting out or a couple weeks into this new year, God, I pray for, again, my family friend who's looking for a church, God, that you would help them and to find the local body that you're calling them to get involved with. God, I also, again, want to continue praying for the Steely family, specifically Mr. Steely, God, that he would come to salvation and to have a relationship with you. God, not only that, but I pray that his the counseling he's in right now would bear fruit and produce fruit. God, I pray that it would be of benefit for him and his family as he's going through that time. God, for those who have friendships and relationships that they're still bitter about and are struggling with forgiveness, God, I pray that you would bring about a spirit of understanding, a spirit of mercy and grace to those involved in any kind of situation like that. God, I pray that you would help us to remember that you for have forgiven us for so much and we are also called to forgive others like you have forgiven us and god i know that's hard sometimes god i pray that that would be the model of our lives god i pray for sisters and and siblings and family members and friends and acquaintances and co-workers who have rejected you, God, and, and who have not come to a place where they have made you Lord and Savior of their life, God, I pray that, that you would give the believers in those people's lives opportunities and chances to share your gospel with them so that they could come to have a relationship with you. Father, it's in your name that we pray. Amen.
Hey guys, thank you um, so much for watching. I really enjoyed this lesson. I hope you did too. Again, these are always encouraging to me. Um, just want to give a quick reminder. Again, it's in the link below. It's kind of hard to see, but the outline um, that I'm using each week, I have all my notes that I'm using for teaching that is available. If you go down, there's a Google Drive link. You can download it where you can print it on one page, kind of front and back like a little booklet, which is what I'm using. Um, or for two pages, it's just formatted a little bit differently, so it makes sense for the for the two individual pages. But um, then you can have just a little study resource for any time you're going through the Book of Jude. Again, you can just kind of see some of the common themes and and key themes as as you're doing a study of that. And again, thank y'all so much for watching. I'll see y'all in the next one. Take care.